All right, hey everyone. So in my presentation today, I'll be speaking about how to double your YouTube affiliate commissions with precise scripts, analysis, and the evolution method. So firstly, I just want to discuss a little bit about who I am. So I'm 24 years old from Sydney, Australia, and I've been doing direct response marketing for around five years now. Originally, I started with uh, Facebook, but then since Facebook got very difficult, I moved on to YouTube ads, and I've been killing it on YouTube ads since. So um, I run pretty much neutral offers, like solely on ClickBank. So that's what this you know, presentation is mainly going to be around, but you can use these methods to scale pretty much anything like lead gen, different businesses, like so a ton of different stuff. But um, yeah, so I dropped out of college uh, to pursue affiliate marketing around four years now. And since then, I've generated over eight figures with affiliate marketing. So uh, another really crazy stat that we got is uh, from my method that I teach to people, our students have made over $122 million in commissions in one year. So you can see here, this is, uh, this is uh, basically a letter from ClickBank saying that our students have collectively made over $122 million in one year with this exact method. So um, in, this meth like, in this presentation, I'm not going to get, like, there's no crazy secret sauce to what I do. It's actually pretty simple. So it might blow you guys' minds, but pretty much I'm going to just be giving pretty much most of it away, and it's not too advanced or crazy to be hitting these numbers. So, yeah, I'm going to be giving the exact method away that's, like, able, that we're able to, like, hit results like these, right? So you can see there's $170,000 in a week, $340,000 in a week, and um, this is also from one of our top students and the number one ClickBank affiliate who's actually standing over there, and he's done over $500,000 uh, a week with this method here. So the three keys of this presentation are gonna be targeting and mastering the opening scene and visuals and scripts to scale your script to a broad audience. Um, the evolution method, testing structure to find winning videos and scale to massive audiences, and how to analyze and optimize and scale your campaigns to $90,000 days. So the first section is targeting and mastering the opening scene and video scripts to scale to a broad audience. So with YouTube, the biggest leverage point of YouTube is that you can just pretty much run broad and YouTube basically funnels all the best traffic to you, even if your product is quite niche. And I'm gonna be discussing how I, exactly how I leverage the YouTube algorithm to, um, through a power of an amazing opening script and opening scene um, and Brilliant Hook that powerfully calls out your audience and catches their attention. So again, with this method, you can see how easy it is to scale up numbers this fast, just targeting broad uh, with, this, with the scripts and the opening scenes and the hooks that I utilize. So firstly, the type of offers I run again are broad. And when you're running broad, the main thing you wanna do is focus on the first five seconds of your video because this is the most important, right? So the first five seconds involves the hook and the opening scene. And it's really important that you have a very good visual as well as a, like a very powerful ad copy in the first five seconds because a lot of people actually watch on mobile and they might not actually have their, uh, their like sound on, right? So they might not actually be able to hear the part of your script. So if you have a really good opening scene, that helps them actually pay attention. So within the first five seconds of my script, the first scene that I have is a very out there scene and it implements most or all of the psychological elements that I'm gonna be discussing soon. And the second scene is a very basic scene that could be stock footage um, or something related to your target demographic. So that way that the user feels momentum before the actual ad, uh, they get to skip their ad. Because if you have one scene in the first five seconds, it can sort of, it doesn't create that momentum. So if you can fit two scenes in there, it creates that momentum so that they want to go through and watch. So again, the opening scene is the most important part of the video because the way the YouTube algorithm works is if someone watches your video and they skip five seconds in, um, the YouTube algorithm is going to see those people and not target those people, where people that continue to watch your video after the ad, like skip now button and watch the majority of your video, they're going to be put into like their own sort of audience and then Google's going to optimize for those. So the most important thing is a patent interrupt. And since you guys are all marketers, you probably know what that is. But yeah, a patent interrupt is, uh, is a way to alter someone's mental emotional or behavioral state to break their typical habits and you need to think of it as an unexpected act that jolts them into another state of mind so as everyone's watching their youtube videos they're not really you know looking to watch ads and when an ad comes up they're pretty much just hovering over the skip now button to uh skip the ad so the whole goal of that uh the first opening scene in the first five seconds is to break them out of that uh perception of like they're watching a video and then 
Yeah, so that's pretty much the whole key of the first five seconds. Because if they're not, you know, if they skip your ad, it doesn't matter how good your script is, or it doesn't matter how good your video is, they're not going to watch your ad. So the way, how do we ensure that our opening scene is not just good, but great? So we achieve this by being out of the ordinary and having an opening scene that, pat that breaks the pattern of their video viewing. So this is achieved by having a scene that is gross or curiosity provoking imagery that has an open loop and also scientific. And if you can have all three of these in one, that's gonna create like a really powerful um, effect in their mind that keeps them, keeps them anchored to your video and actually creates a lot of curiosity. And one of the big things is the open loop because if you've got something there that they don't quite understand, that's gonna make them more like mentally and subconsciously invested to figure out what the video is gonna be about. So the opening scene um, when paired with a hook and script is like the whole key and the hook and script is going to be discussed a little bit further uh, in the presentation. But when these elements are paired together, it creates a very abrupt and curiosity provoking sense of intrigue. And the whole goal of the opening scene for the way I run ads is to make them think like, what is that? Or, you know, what is this weird thing? I need to know what this is. So if you look at the next video uh, examples that I'm going to show you, the whole goal is for you to think like, basically what the hell am I sort of looking at, right? Because then that's going to capture their attention. So I'm going to run through some examples now. Um, the opening scene, you know, can be realistic or stock footage or also cartoony and vectorized. So you can see here, these are dental examples for a ClickBank offer. And you can see we have like a vectorized cartoony image that calls out the actual... Um, you know, the problem of the offer, right? Which is like dental issues or like gum decay or something. So you can see we have something there on the left and then also just like a typical stock footage here that really highlights the actual problem point of the offer, right? And so this is gonna be able to connect with the target audience that has this problem. And everyone that doesn't have, you know, dental issues is gonna skip the ad and that's gonna teach the YouTube algorithm to not target those people. Um, you can also see there's examples of the hook here which also then again calls out the pain point of the audience. Uh, another example seen here is for diabetes or weight loss. So again, this is like a vector image. You can get this um, made on like Fiverr or something like that. And again, it doesn't always need to be a vector image. It could be like a stock footage image. But um, yeah, the whole goal of this image, as you guys are all seeing and taking photos, it's like very weird, right? You don't understand what's going on. It doesn't really make sense, but that's the whole goal of it. Um, you can also have a headline or other text on the opening scene. So it acts as like a sub headline that goes along with your hook. So another one here, this is for diabetes. So this was the actual opening scene on my winning video that did over $60,000 days. And it basically started as that there. And then it transitioned into like a GIF or like some sort of video of just something weird, right? So when I make these images, I, I just want to make it like as weird as possible. Cause you can see this and you're probably looking like, what is this, right? But that's the whole point. So. It's got something to do with the pancreas, right? Which has got something to do with diabetes. And then it morphs into this image here. And yeah, it just creates like a really powerful sense of like intrigue and curiosity. Uh, another one here is for the vision niche. So again, the same concept, just something kind of weird and interesting um, that obviously targets the, the actual like uh, pain point, which is the eyes. So again, for the other visuals of your YouTube video, all you need to do is you know, create a YouTube video with stock footage. So I pretty much always use stock footage, but if you have other user-generated content or any other content related to uh, any other campaigns that you may have run on you know, Facebook or TikTok or anything like that, you can layer them in with your video as well. And the, the main point is that your video really needs to connect to your target avatar, right? So your customer demographic, because if you have you know, if you're targeting people over 55 and you're using stock footage of like 20 year olds and stuff, that creates a disconnect in your, uh, in your audience. So now I'm gonna give you the nine pillars for a script that converts. And I'm gonna be giving you basically the exact script formula that's helped our students generate over $122 million in a year. And again, like I'm not gonna hold anything back. These are just gonna be the straight nine um, elements of a script that we use. So, Number one is pattern interrupt and qualify the audience. Number two is agitate the problem uh, and pain points. Number three, number four is provide solutions and results. Number five is establish authority. And number six is value opportunity, new opportunity. Number seven is value perception. Number eight is social proof. And number nine is call to action and the urgency. So again, number one, this is the pattern interrupt and qualify the audience. 
Um, so this needs to be both visual and audible, as we discussed in the opening scenes, and it, you know, paired with weird, gross, curiosity-provoking image. And again, the whole purpose of this scene here and this part of the script is to stop them from, you know, skipping the now button and continuing to watch the video. Um, an example, I'll give an example of this for weight loss, right? So you've never seen anything like this for weight loss before. This powerful new solution men and women are using to drop weight like crazy. So that's an example, right? It calls out the audience, it calls out the demographic, and it basically introduces something that's going to keep them hooked into the video. And so number two, what's in it for them? So you're basically going to be telling them why they should watch this video and what benefit they'll get out of it if they watch the whole video. Uh, number three is agitate the problem and the pain points. So humans are emotional creatures and we need to poke their pain points and agitate their problems that our product actually solves. So this point allows us to really capture our avatar and let them understand that we know what problems they're facing. So you basically can just get a list of like all their symptoms or their problems or their pain points and just really link it in there so that they understand that this video they're going to watch is for them. And every time you hit their pain point or agitate their problem, they then realize that, you know, they get more invested because they understand that you understand them. Number four is provide solutions and results. So this is pretty much where you can just link, uh, you know, it's helped X amount of people around the world or you've shipped it around this many times or maybe just like a testimonial or something like that. So pretty much any solution uh, or like results that you guys have had for your offer or for the offer that you're running. So number five is establishing authority. So creating authority is often infused in other points, such as mentioning individuals with credibility, such as doctors, research scientists, or different institutions or different you know, organizations. And what I've noticed is male voices tend to perform a lot better than female voices, which you know, even if you're running weight loss or a female-based product, I've noticed that male voices tend to outperform female voices, which is probably just due to like subconscious authority bias. Um, and it's also really important to write your ad in third person, not first person. And just write your ad as though you're an authority on the subject, because then when people listen to it, they understand that you know, you're coming from a point of authority and it makes them trust and respect you more. So number six is new opportunity. So how is this different from everything else that they've tried before? So this is where you really need to use the unique hooks of the offer that you're running. Because for example, if you're doing weight loss, most people have probably seen every single different weight loss thing. Like it's a diet, it's an exercise routine or something like that. So if your offer has a really unique hook or mechanism, that's what you're gonna to wanna to use to layer within your script to show them that it's something new that they've not seen before. So number seven is value perception. So you need to tell them why this is a good deal and let and that let them know that without this, they'll waste more time and money than they would have, you know, when they could have already achieved the benefits that you're seeing. So again, this is just sort of comparing everything that they've done before to this new opportunity. And you can see the momentum of like, you know, new opportunity to value perception. So the flow of the script is also really important. And then social proof. So again, here, this is similar to providing solution and results. So you want to basically layer in you know, what this solution provides, like how it helps their problems, how it helps them, like, you know, you don't want to use too many, you don't want to use claims really, but you can layer in some testimonies or case studies or stuff like that, right? And number nine is urgency and call to action. So remind them that this offer could disappear at any time and that there's only a few spots available um, or something along the lines of that, right? And so this is the final call to action and it's really, you can also put in a lot of, um, you can put in, typically I put in a call to action at the end and also in the middle. So maybe like one third or halfway through the video. So that way everyone that watches maybe halfway of the video gets a call to action. So I put the one in the middle of the script and also towards uh, at the very end of the script. Right, so now I'm gonna be discussing the evolution method and the testing structure to find winning videos and scale to massive audience. So as a media buyer for five years now, I always realized that you just need to come up with the most effective and efficient way to actually find a winning video. You know, on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok, on any different so like platform, I've always viewed it as like, what is the most effective way that I can test so that I can find a winner every time? And you know, if you guys have found winning campaigns before, it's pretty much just a systematic process and I've basically distilled it down into this and this is what I use every single time to basically start on a brand new offer, a brand new niche, and uh, go through simple step of processes to find a winner. So first I'm gonna be going over the campaign structure and the key performance indicators. 
So the campaign structure is a 113, and so that means one campaign, one ad group, three ads. Um, and so that's basically the way I structure it in my YouTube, like, like actual Google ad account, right? So one campaign, one ad group, and three different ads. And the KPIs that you're going to want to be looking at are the cost per click, which is the most important. So the goal is around a dollar twenty-five or lower. Um, typically, all my winners are like under a dollar, but around a dollar twenty-five, you can have great performance. Um, and the video ad click-through rate, the goal is to have it over two percent. And then again, the view rate, it's you know ideally have it over twenty percent. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is the ROI, and that's also then dictated by the cost per click, right? So cost per click is always the most important. So I'm going to be going over now the o like the overview of the evolution method. So it's basically got four phases, right? So phase one is testing different videos and scripts. Phase two is taking that winner, or like taking the winner video and script, and uh, testing different hooks. Then phase three is taking the winner of this phase two. Sorry, phase three is taking the winner of phase two, and then testing different opening scenes. And then phase four is basically taking the winner of that and scaling it. So I'm going to give you like some visual examples of how I actually lay this out because I basically write out what I'm going to do on like a piece of paper or like a Word document or something so that I can actually see how I'm going about and what I'm going to test and what I'm going to scale. So the first one is to test completely different videos. And since they're different scripts and videos, you know, they, they're going to be completely different, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that these videos and scripts are very different. That ensures that we're going to have like an actual good test because if you test videos that are just slightly tweaked, you're not going to have you know, a good test. And so like a visual example of that is if you test three videos that are basically the same and you just change like a couple words or a couple scenes, it's not going to be as effective as testing three completely different things. And since this first phase is the first phase, we want to make sure we get a massive test to begin with so we can test completely different videos. So that way, foundationally, we can find what's going to be performing the best like from the ground up. Because if you test three things that are very similar to begin with, the next ones that you're going to test are going to have like, you know, it's just not going to be performing as well as it could. So the next phase is testing different opening hooks, right? And so this is the first 10 to 15 seconds of your video script. So in the first example, let's say we tested three different videos. We can see that video one performed the best. So we move this to phase two. And you can see we're testing um, hook two, three, and four on the number one performing video, which was video one, right? So our goal for this stage is, again, take the previous winner and test different hooks. And then again, right, the stats don't also have to be perfect. So you might not be making sales straight away, but you want to be making sure that you're looking at the, the KPIs. So even though you might be testing these and not be making sales, you can still find ones that are performing the best. And so then again, you know, how do we find which ad performed the best? So again, you want to look at the KPIs. But the, also the great thing about this is because we're testing in groups of three, you can already comparatively compare which ones are going to be performing the best. So if you launch three, two of them might have like a $3 CPC or like a $2 CPC, and one of them might have like a $1.50 CPC. So that's going to be the one that you want to work with and move to the next stage. And so then we have the third phase. So the third phase is the opening scene, right? And this is the imagery of the video, and this is what I discussed uh, early on in the presentation where I gave you guys some examples. So testing this is actually massive because I've had videos where I've had the exact same video, the exact same hook, um, and it's maybe negative or breaking even, and I throw it into phase three, and I'm like immediately getting 100, 150% ROI because that, it just shows that if you don't visually capture the attention of the audience, they're not going to watch the whole video. So you could have a video that's performing, or you, you could have a video that's a winner, but again, if you're not capturing their attention at the beginning, no one's going to watch it and it's not going to perform. So again, since um, the original video is opening scene one, we start it as opening scene two, three, and four. Um, and then again, we monitor the ads data and we see which one's going to be performing the best. So then what we want to do is, so now let's say that you te you've, you're going through and you're testing the hooks and then testing the opening scenes. Um, and you haven't found a winner yet. So what you can do now is since you've basically evolved your ad to have like the best video, the best hook, the best opening scene, what you can do now is take the best hook and the best opening scene and use those and test different scripts now. Because now you've basically optimized the very front end of your video to be the best performing. So you can put it into the, you can put it now, the hook and the opening scene, 
onto different scripts. And now each one of those scripts you test is gonna basically perform way better because you've optimized the beginning of the video. Um, and again, for this example, let's say hook four, opening scene four, performed the best in all the previous tests. You throw that on top of the next videos, such as video four, five, and six. And yeah, so basically, the reason why I call it the evolution method is because every stage you're going through, it's just getting better and better and better. And so if you just keep recycling this method, um, you know, you're pretty much going to find a winner. And so I typically find a winner, you know, after like sometimes in stage three or some, sometimes in stage four. But the whole process is basically now, like I just have a fundamental framework that I can just throw anything in and I just keep going through the stages without any confusion and I find a winner pretty much every single time. Um, and so now let's say, for example, um, we've tested this and now video five, hook four and opening scene four is performing the best. What we do is just repeat the phases, right? So we take video five and now we test hook fi five, six and seven. And then we find what hook's performing the best and we do the same thing. So now we have video five with hook six and testing opening scene five, six and seven. And then you know, once you've done this, you can then find the winner, which let's say is this one, and this is the video you scale up. So by doing this process, you can pretty much just repeat it every single time. And you're basically putting it through a conveyor belt that's, you know, inevitably, if you just keep following this, every single ad you launch, every single ad you evolve is just going to keep getting better and better until you find a winner. Um, all right, sweet. So now let's talk about how to analyze, optimize, and scale your campaigns to $90,000 a day. Um, and again, the whole process of like YouTube ads is finding a winner, right? So the whole goal is to find a winning video and then you can scale it up. The whole scaling process is actually pretty simple with Google. Um, if you've run on Facebook, you're probably familiar with like, you know, horizontal scaling, surfing, all these different like advanced methods, like scaling across ad accounts and stuff. But yeah, with Google, once you really find a winner that performs, that's when you're like pretty much set and you can just start scaling it. So the method we use is the bump method, right? And this is the best method. So what we do is we increase the budget in small steps throughout the day, and you can increase it many times in a day, you know, five times, 10 times, pretty much as, me like as much as you can, right? And to, as long as the ROI is stable. So w how this method works is we analyze the data, and if the ROI is satisfactory, then we review the, like we want to bump the budget, right? So you want to allow time for the budget increase to take effect, and then you want to basically repeat that. So what you want to do is, if you have your ad spend at like $200, and it's getting profitable ROI, you can increase the budget, and as the spend happens and the ROI consistently sticks, you just keep doing that. So you're basically riding the ROI until the ROI dips, and then you can leave it for a day and monitor it. So if your budget is under $1,500, um, you only want to increase the budget by a maximum of 50% of the budget at a time. So let's say if your budget's $200, which I usually, I test all my ads at $200. So if it's at $200 and it's getting like profitable ROI, I'll then bump it to 300 and so on. So how often to increase? So first you have to see if the ROI will maintain at each budget increase and bigger, bigger budgets react faster and therefore can be scaled faster. But if the budget is under $1,000, likely you'll have to wait for a few hours uh, for the sales to catch up just because you have less ad spend going you know, within a certain time. So this example here is you know, if your current budget is at 150 and your ROI is 80% for the day, what you wanna do is increase that budget to 250, which is a 50% increase. Um, then you want to wait a few hours and recheck the ROI. And if the ROI is good, then you bump the budget again. And so you're basically just like sort of surfing it, right? So if you bump your budget and it spends and it's 100% ROI, then you can bump the budget and it spends. And then as you start getting to like $1,000, $2,000, 4000 5000 you can literally just keep scaling it like that. So I've taken ads from $200 a day up to $5,000 to $10,000 a day in spend in a single day and also like two days. So once, but that really just talks like, really just shows that you really need to just find a winning video. And if you find a winning video, you can pretty much scale it to like massive days. So that's why the emphasis should be always on finding a video that performs the best. And another thing as well is while you're scaling it like this, if the ROI does drop, since we are testing sort of three ads and finding a winner, you can always be putting more ads in to the evolution method while you're scaling. So if you have an ad that's performing and then it's maybe at 50% ROI as, you, as you're increasing it, 
you can duplicate it and then throw in another hook or another opening scene. And then you can, you can basically be testing while you're scaling and you can find multiple winners as you're scaling up. So uh, the benefit of this is the campaign doesn't re-enter the learning phase. Um, and that means your like, campaign can just run pretty much uh, way smoother as you're scaling. And it allows you to really increase the budget really fast. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the whole bump method. And again, it's nothing crazy um, because the whole thing relies on the actual YouTube video. So if the YouTube video is really good through you know, following the key script components, you know, following through the evolution method and finding a winner, that's where you're actually going to find something that pops and that you can really scale. But if you try and scale something that isn't going to be performing or isn't actually a winner, then you're going to struggle with ROI issues and so on. But um, yeah, so that is pretty much the method. And again, it's nothing crazy like Facebook or anything, but with this method and this system, that's how we're able to hit like such math massive days by just really focusing on broad audiences, focusing on the opening scene and the hook, making sure the script and the video as a whole is really good, and then pretty much just scaling it like that. Um, something I'll also mention is Google basically recommends budgets, and I never do the recommended budget, um, or I have sometimes and it has performed, but if you've got like a $5,000 budget, Google recommends you to just increase it to like 10 or 20, and then if you increase it to 20, it will say increase it to 50. So I never really go by any of Google's recommendations. I always just sort of scale it through this method here. Um, but yeah, that's been my presentation today, guys. So you can reach me on you know, my Instagram at Chris Reader. And um, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed that.